Welcome everyone to the info session about SFAI transcripts with PPPE. My name is Maria Teresa Barbist and I'm the, currently the president of the board at SFAA and one of the co-founders. Uh, I'm so excited to have Janelle Quayle here today from PPPE, Ozar specifically. Uh, Scott Valverde unfortunately got sick and is not going to be able to join us, but Scott has been incredibly helpful with this uh, very difficult process of getting the transcripts uh, to PPE. And um, Janelle was actually one of the people who drove all the way from Sacramento to SFAI, to the campus, to pick up boxes of transcripts and bring them to Sacramento and have them scanned. So thank you so much for that. Um, we are also incredibly grateful to uh, the donors uh, for the SFAI transcript fundraiser that paid for um, the transfer of the transcripts from the server at SFAI. There were 10,000, more than 10,000 transcripts on the server at SFAI. And there were how many boxes, Chanel? Like m many boxes with paper transcripts as well, right? Yeah, there was. Actually, it was uh, me and Yesenia who were doing the... Oh, Yesenia was there too. The Home Depot carts pushing up the transcripts of the, oh, wow. of the ramp. But it was uh, me and Yesenia. Who's also thank on the call from BPPE, but yeah. Thank you so much for that. Um, so everyone knows, of course, the, the bankruptcy trustee uh, was holding the transcripts um, legally and then um, was um, transferring the, the, the transcripts to BPPE and, and the alumni were raising money to, to make this possible. Um, so we all were working very well together. Also a big shout out to uh, Jose de los Reyes, uh, who we couldn't have done it without him. He was a former register at SFAI and gave us a lot of intel about where all those transcripts are, how many there are, and how to best um, get them to BPPE. Also, I want to give a shout out to Ferrilli, who was the company who got them off the server and generated those 10,000 plus transcripts that are now with BPPE. So um, thanks for everyone who who came together on this project. Uh, we at SFAA obviously knew that this was uh, incredibly important to all alumni, that everyone needed the transcripts as soon as possible and also as official as possible. And you're probably going to talk a little bit more about that. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful for Janelle to uh, make the time to be here today and Yesenia and uh, to answer any questions that, my, that you might have about the process of how you can get the transcripts. Uh, and then also, additionally, I, I knew a lot of alumni are struggling with a student loan forgiveness applications. So Janelle has kindly agreed to also give all the information that she has on that process and done also on transfer to other schools like that. Those are the three points we're gonna go over with and with Janelle and then please any questions you might have put them in the chat and I will I will facilitate the Q&A later on uh, probably in about 20 25 minutes you know we're, we're gonna go over any questions you might have and thank you all for joining it's really great to see so many of you here today and yeah I'm gonna hand it over to Janelle <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you, Maria. Um, once again, my name is Janelle Quayle, and I um, am a part of the Bureau for Private Post-Secondary Education. Um, and like Maria said, um, Scott, who is the chief of the Office of Student Assistance and Relief, could not make it, unfortunately. But he wants to. He really wanted to be here and, um, you know, thank you, Maria. Thank the. Thank you. The, thank the association. Um, so he sends his apologies. But um, you know, it's it's. Um, I guess it's a pretty unfortunate how many school closures that we we deal with and how many students we assist. But um, I would say, you know, our experience with SFAI, um, I don't think we've seen a third party organization or even an alumni come together and raise money to get transcripts. So that was really great to see, just have the collaboration with you um, and then the association and, and the board as well, because a lot of times students just unfortunately, once the school closes, they're they're not always able to get their transcripts or always having like a funding source to be able to um, 
like have the transcripts like uploaded to a server, which sometimes I didn't really think, I, mean, I didn't really know that like, oh, this is actually going to cost money to have these transcripts put in some kind of server and have someone available to be able to fill those requests. So um, yeah, it's it's been a really nice collaboration to be able to work with you guys. So I wanna thank you on that. So I'm gonna be kind of multitasking. So just bear with me as I try to like share my screen and then send links in the chat as well. So let me share my screen and then we can get started. Um, okay. And if for some reason you can't hear me, the AC just turned on, it's like cold in here now. So if you can't hear me or, um, you know, something goes wrong with me sharing, please let me know. Yeah, uh, you're coming through loud and clear. Perfect. We can see okay. you perfectly. So everything works well. And everyone can also see the, the shared screen now. So uh, if there are any problems for the rest of you, please put it in the chat. But uh, it works well for, for now. Okay, hold on. I just... Mm. Sorry, I just minimized, I just like minimized it and it like disappeared. So hold on, let me try this again. And we did do a tech kind of tech review before this, but apparently <laughs> kind of helped. Okay, let me try to do it again. Share screen. All right. That okay. looks good. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. That's what I was trying to do, split my screen and then, okay. So um, yeah, so my name is Janelle and I've been here um, with the Bureau for Private Post-Secondary Education for the last 12 years. Um, the last six years have been within the Office of Student Assistance and Relief, which is like an office under the Bureau for Private Post-Secondary Education. So I'll just give you a little bit intro about who um, the Office of Student Assistance um, and relief is. Um, so we are a part of the state agency Department of Consumer Affairs. So um, if you don't know, um, the state of California has a whole consumer protection agency and most industries are um, uh, overseen by DCA or the Department of Consumer Affairs and the Bureau for Private Post-Secondary Education, BPPE, um, it specifically protects consumers um, the, with, or the mandate to protect consumers for private colleges. So we're specific to private colleges. Um, OSAR was put in place maybe about, well, it's over six years now. So about six years ago, um, even a little bit before that, the, the government legislature uh, found a need to put us, to put the office in place because there were just so many private colleges closing, unfortunately, and, and not really... Um, there wasn't really an office to be able to assist students one on one and individually through that, you know, um, unfortunate circ circumstance of seeing the school close. So it was such an issue um, that they put our office together. So I don't know if some of you remember, but like Healed College was a big school closure um, over the years. Uh, Brightwood, Everest were kind of private colleges, big, bigger school closures that closed. And so um, three things that the Office of Student Assistance and Relief does. Number one is assist students um, anytime a private college closes. And so um, this is kind of similar. I know this one's specific to transcripts and, and maybe just a little bit more about loan information, but we have workshops um, anytime a private college closes. We'll either do it virtually or we'll usually go to, um, you know, whatever city the closure happened in and we'll just give students information on their rights, how they can get their records and, and really just try to walk alongside them and, you know, hopefully make them as whole as possible as far as their education once the school closes. It's not really something that I really knew was a thing that happened. You know, when I went to college, I just thought that I would always be able to get my transcripts. The school will always be there. Um, I know public colleges are more less likely to close. And so, but I didn't, I didn't know that colleges close period, whether they're private or public. And so, um, yeah. Um, and so that's the first thing is we assist students with school closures. Um, we also assist students in um, the state um, has what's called a student tuition recovery fund. And it's a specific fund that all private college, college students pay into in the event their private college closes. 
Um, and you may not have remembered it if you signed like your contract or your, or your enrollment agreement with the school, but there is like a STRF um, fee there. Um, and it's just, it's basically if, you know, if you're not able to recover your money from the school or benefit from your education or, um, or, your, or finish out your education when the school closes, there's a fund that students can apply for. Um, and then we help students compile information to, apl to apply for that. Um, that's the second function of OSAR. And then the third one is proactive outreach. Um, basically, we, I don't want to say warn, but it, we give informed choice. So um, college workshops, so proactively let students know their options as far as if you sign up for a private college or, you know, looking into how much money you're even going to spend and if you're going to be making um, you know, if you're if you're going to be able to pay off your loan um, with the amount of debt that you're going to incur if you go, to, you know, if you take out loans for your college. And so, um, and you know, red flags that you should look out for when signing up for a school. Um, I think a lot of times, um, you know, more just a lot of times people don't know, like keep your records. You know, I didn't think that I needed to keep my records because I didn't think the school was going to close. So we just let students know proactively, like these are the things that should look you should look out for prior to signing up for a college, especially because so much time is invested, so much money is invested. A lot of times it's your own money, sometimes it's your parents if they help out or other family members. And so that's the third function of OSAR. So I will get into transcripts, which is the main reason um, why we are here today. And then I know I have my uh, uh, screen or I'm sharing my screen. And so this is um, the link that was provided in the event. And so this is um, a page um, on, on OSAR's website, how we, how, we, how we can help. Our contact information is on here as well. Um, and so um, I'll send the links maybe during the Q&A um, or at some point before the meeting is over, because I just realized it's probably going to be hard to go back and forth and sending links. Um, but I will link some of these resources that I am going, uh, that I'm talking about. Um, okay, so let's get on to transcripts. So I know a lot of you have already submitted transcripts um, already, but I will walk you through um, on where, you know, you can get that. And so the website is bppe.ca.gov. And then um, you won't have to go this far because in the event um, link, it le actually leads you to uh, transcript information, which is under the students icon. And then this is just information on transcripts. Um, the state of California or BPPE has, uh, we retain transcripts for other schools as well. And so um, SFAI will be listed on here as well. Let's just see, San Francisco. Okay, it's not, but it, we do have transcripts for SFAI students. Um, and so where you would request that is you would click this link right here, transcript request form, and it'll lead you here. And so the, the form is pretty easy, as some of you know who have filled out um, just basic student information, school information, um, and then where you want um, the transcript to be sent. Um, so right now, the processing time is approximately 10 business days. So you can email it to the BPP email. You can fax it if you still use fax. My dad, side note the other day, mentioned how, to, how does he send a fax? So <laughs> some people still use it. Um, and that's, you know, however you want to send it is fine. Or you can mail it to, um, to one of these addresses at the top. Um, and Yesenia did let us know that she's already filled some of those requests. Um, just an update, I know, um, so some of the older um, records that Yesenia and I physically put in boxes, those have not been uploaded yet, but they are like, we, we do have your, we do have your request. So once those get uploaded, um, they will be filled. Um, I, Yesenia let me know that by the 20th, that all SFAI transcripts would be uploaded. Um, Yesenia, if you can um, let me know, was it October 20th or was it November 20th? Yes. Yeah, so right now we're working where our goal is to have all transcripts um, uploaded by October 20th. Okay. So yeah. So just in a few days. Um, thank you for that. Um, so most of them are mm -hmm. uploaded. So yes, if you have questions on that process, um, you know, you can email um, uh, BPPE's email address and I will go ahead and um, put that link in, in, the com in, in the comment section. And at the end, if you do have questions specifically about transcripts, Yesenia will be available too if you have, if you want more information on that. And um, yeah, so we can save those Q and A's for the end. 
Um, and okay. there's just one question that would fit perfectly here. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's right. There is Ashley was asking, can you send a transcript to yourself so I will have it, or does it have to be a school or professional organization? Okay, I could answer this if uh, yeah. if you like. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll, the I'll put you back up on our little wait. Where where are you? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, Lydia. <laughs> there. Hi. Yes, so um, the transcript request form. So you fill out the transcript request form and where you put your student information, we always provide a transcript to the student and also to the uh, the recipient. If the recipient matches with the students, then of course we just send it to the students. Um, but yeah, you we, we always will always send one to the student and also to the recipient um, requester. But if you just want it for yourself, yeah, we could send it to you. We could send you as many copies as, as you like. And um, yeah, and you can request them more than once. If you need them more than once, we do send a copy of the transcripts. And then we also put an, a second copy in a sealed envelope in case you um, need it for an employer to take it to a different school. But you'll always get a copy when you request it. Yesenia, there's one more question, and maybe Janelle, if you could scroll down a little bit on your screen, oh, sure. uh, it cuts it off on the bottom where the information goes in, the transcript recipient information, right? Okay, perfect. can you can you can you see it right now? Yeah, and now okay. it's perfect. There is another question about the diploma. Yun, Yun Tong Wu uh, is asking, well, would would uh, would it be possible to request a copy of the undergrad diploma if I lost it? Unfortunately, the only thing that we were able to obtain were transcripts. And so for the most part, that is sufficient. Um, there is information on the transcripts that, that indicate that you, you know, how many credits you took, if you graduated, the dates of attendance, um, all that information will be on the transcript. But no, unfortunately, we have no copies of diplomas or certificates. I'm wondering if I really actually downloaded the diploma from the server, that would only be the last, um, you know, couple of years, uh, last 20 years, I believe, that were on the server. Um, are you 100% uh, are you positive? Because I believe we asked them to also download the diploma, Yesenia. You haven't seen any uh, diploma? I... I have not seen any diplomas as far as all the transcripts that we have processed so far. Um, all the ones that were provided to us electronically, I have not seen a diploma okay. or certificate. Okay. And then also just to add on to that, when we were uh, physically looking at like the physical transcripts, they were only, and they, uh, when we went there, um, they separated out transcripts in like, like the transcripts were already sorted into the files and that's the only files that they had there um that they gave to us and so and in those files I think you said, there wasn't there weren't any um diplomas in there um and then also just another side note um the the law in California is that um the only documents that a school or the designator of the school you know record record holder for the school is required to keep indefinitely is transcripts um, and so that's probably why as well, we don't have, um, typically we don't actually for pretty much all, you, Sunny, you could probably confirm this, but we don't ever really get diplomas. It's just transcripts because that's the only, we're, that's the only record we're allowed to really keep if, if BPP is the holder. And then also if the school has another third party organization, um, they only keep transcripts uh, from what I know, unfortunately. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, for the most part, even um, other transcripts that we have for other schools, um, the only thing that we have are, are transcripts. And, and we're not allowed to sign them, but like I said, we do, we will put them in a sealed envelope and provide them to students in a sealed envelope in case, you know, anyone else needs it. Or that's why a lot of the times we send it directly to the requester, whether it's a job or a school, and they, and they accept it as, um, as official. Okay, just uh, uh, Julie, I put it in the in the chat as well, but SFBI doesn't have an address anymore. It is now closed. The SFBI Legacy Foundation has an archive, it has an address uh, in the Crown Point Press Building, Becky's here. But um, I think we are going to move on. Jonathan is already asking about um, 
student loan forgiveness. So I think if there are no okay. other questions, uh, or did you want to say anything else about uh, transcripts, Chanel? No, 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 that was it. I just want to kind of walk you guys through where to get the form and yeah, but no, yeah, that's uh, perfect. Yep, that's all my notes for transcripts. And we also have a link for this uh, form on our website, sfartistsalumni.org is our website. So we are always trying to keep it on the very top, you know, request your transcripts. We're going to keep it on our website accessible for you. So if you lose it at some point, you know, or like you, you don't know anymore, how can you get it? Then it's going to be on our website. Okay. Is there a cover letter that goes out with the transcripts explaining the school is closed? I believe there is, Yesenia, right? Yes, yes. So there is a cover letter just indicating, you know, um, thank you for your request for your transcripts. And it's just a little information about uh, uh, how we have maintained the transcripts. And this is the true and correct copy that we received from the um the school so yes there will be a cover letter that is included with your transcripts and so far how many transcripts have you done already Yesenia because I feel, I believe it was already a hundred probably right oh yes it's been probably a, yeah for sure over a hundred maybe a couple hundred wow um that we've received and we process and like I said for the most part we found most all of them um, unless they were some of the older ones that are still being scanned. But yeah, it's been a very, very, um, yeah, we've been very productive in getting them out to the students. And also just so everyone knows, we have so far not received any complaints from schools not accepting or employers not accepting the transcripts that were sent out from PPPE because there were oh. worries, you know, it's not technically it, uh, an official transcript from mm -hmm. SFAI since SFAI doesn't exist anymore but it is a true copy of that official transcript and so far there was not a university a college or employer who would not accept those transcripts especially since they are coming from a, a state agency right so mm -hmm. there is no fee for the transcripts uh, the, the, I guess the upside on this whole <laughs> this whole mess is that you don't have to pay for transcripts anymore Um that was a fee with uh, Clearinghouse. There's no fee anymore, right? And there is not going to be a fee, I think. Is any, yeah, you can confirm. <laughs> correct, correct. So yes, we haven't heard, have, I haven't got any calls um, with any problems or issues with anyone else accepting those transcripts. And yes, you can request transcripts. There's no fee. You can request as many as you like and we'll provide them to you. Thank you so much, Yesenia. And then I think we can move on to the student loan forgiveness that I know a lot of people have questions about. Yeah. Thank you, Janelle. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I just thought that was great. I was like, man, charge it to the state of California <laughs> to give you yeah. transcripts. Um, okay, yeah. Thank you, Yesenia, for that information. So yeah, we'll move on to federal loans. And so hopefully you won't be too disappointed, but um, we actually are not the experts. OSAR are not the experts on federal loans. However, I can give you the information that I do have and point you to another state agency. Um, so I know a lot of you... Um, had questions and, and you want information on federal loans. So one resource that I'm going to refer to you guys um, or a state agency, they're called the Department of Financial Protection, Protection and Innovation, so DFPI. They're actually right here in Sacramento. Well, all state agencies, I guess, are in Sacramento, but they're right down the street from us. And so what they have is they have a webinar series um, and they archive or they have all their... Um, webinars recorded. Um, and so I've attended some um, as well. Um, and they're usually an hour long. And so they actually, I know someone had a question about public service loan forgiveness program. And so they just had a webinar uh, last week and they're having another one coming up on October 18th um, at 11 a.m. And so their webinars are an hour long. They have multiple people speaking, sometimes outside organizations, and they give really good information on, um, for this, so this one is gonna be about public service loan. Um, but if you look at, let me scroll up, sorry if you guys can see, it says visit our YouTube channel, um, Californians with Student Loan Webinar Series. And then they have, I mean, they've addressed, um, it's almost like, I don't wanna say in real time as changes are happening to like what's going on with federal loans. And so they have like up-to-date uh, webinars on all questions with federal loans. Um, 
what I can go over is some of um, the uh, loan cancellation, federal loan discharge programs that I know about. Um, and once again, this is done through the Department of Education, federal student aid. So one of the reasons why, um, so these, the federal loan discharge loan process actually does not come through the state of California. It comes through the federal government, through the Department of Education. And so that's another reason as well, why we don't have, you know, we, we can't really um, speak about, you know, changes that that may be happening just because we're not the keepers of that up, of some of those loan programs. Um, so let me, um, so I can't send the links while I'm talking, but I'll go over some of these and then send you the links of where you can um, get the get this information. I think I can send the links through that you copied earlier. Oh, if okay, yeah, if, if you can. Um, I put some of them in the chat. So what I'll go over right now, um, so um, I mentioned DFPI. Um, uh, so in the chat, if you can, if uh, Maria, um, their email, uh, their phone number, and then if you have complaints about any loans really, whether it's fi uh, public or um, private, private loans, um, sorry, federal loans or private loans, um, you can submit a complaint too. They process complaints. There's a lot of scams out there, especially if you have federal loans, um, basically telling you, um, you know, you can get your loans canceled if you pay us a fee. And so what DFPI has mentioned in their webinars is that there isn't an, anything that an outside organization can do that you can't do yourself as far as trying to get a loan, get your loan canceled. Um, and so they really shouldn't be charging you any fees. Like you have to pay a fee to, in order to get a loan cancellation. That's not true. So sometimes just be careful of scams um, or calls regarding your federal loans. Um, and, they, and then during their webinars, they talk about that as well. Um, some things to look out for as far as scams. Um, and so um, there's also a link on there, just like linking this page that I have currently sharing with you. Um, so the first one um, as is called a, the first loan program is the close school loan discharge. Um, and if you can drop that link in there, um, that's that's a pro that this is a federal loan program that you would send the application to your loan servicer. And this is specific if your school closed. Um, there are certain requirements. Um, I know one of the main eligibility requirements is if you were enrolled within 120 days um, from when your school closed, you can look into getting um, your whole loan, whole whole federal loan canceled, whether you transferred your credits or not. Um, and so uh, Maria will drop that in the in the chat. And then I also have instructions um, on there as well. The pictures didn't actually go over quite clearly. Um, so Maria, that's okay if you don't send those over, but that's the link. You would just have to scroll down um, to the loan forgiveness of the close school loan discharge if you feel like you, you may benefit from that. Um, that's the first one. The other one um, is called borrower's defense to repayment. And this is usually students who schools close who don't follow within the 120 days, but feel like they didn't benefit from their education. Um, they apply for this one. And this is really if um, you feel you've been like uh, uh, defrauded from your school, if you felt like something wasn't right, um, um, you can apply for that. And if even if you think you're eligible for any of these, I would just go ahead and try to apply if you if you if you feel that you want to and then have them tell you like you know deny you but it doesn't hurt to just try if you feel that um, you'd fit into some of these categories. Um, the next one would be um, unpaid refund discharge. Uh, this is probably this is a newer one that we found out about OSAR. You probably won't fall in this category, but basically um, sometimes students get federal loans and they don't receive all of it. You know I know sometimes there's an overage. Um, after tuition is paid that go directly to the students. So some students actually don't receive that. Um, and so this is a program that you can um, apply for to not be on the hook for the portion that you did not receive. Um, and then I know I mentioned one earlier public uh, service loan forgiveness program. I don't have a ton of information on that, but if you're a state employee or it sounds like you've been in public service, maybe a teacher um, for a certain amount of months and there's certain criteria, and, um, but that's another program as well. Um, I don't have a link for that, um, but um, on the DFP, DFPI uh, webinar um, page, they do have information on that. And then also to um, the state of California, our office, we have, and I mentioned it earlier, a student tuition recovery fund. And so that's another way to recover, recover your money in the event you feel like you didn't benefit from your education. Um, you know, I, this may not be in your case, but sometimes students, even if they graduated, they can't get their transcripts. And so 
you know, if you don't have your transcripts or proof that you went to a school, then technically, I mean, you can't use it to transfer, you can't use it to even get a job. And so, um, you know, there maybe is no value in that, in, in that degree or certificate that you obtained. And so sometimes students apply for the student tuition recovery fund um, for that. And that's something our office does, uh, you know, we can, that's our application, so we can help you with that. Um, and as a side note too, we've also helped students even fill out um, borrower's defense to repayment application, um, closed school loan discharge application. We're not the experts in that, but we really just wanna help students. So um, we will try to help as best as possible if you need help through those applications. I know many students have said they've called federal student aid, which I'll, um, if uh, Maria, if you could put their phone number in there as well. Um, I know the Department of Education doesn't necessarily have um, you know, someone you can probably go come, you know, talk face to face with to help you through your application. And so that's why we help students as best as we can through some of these um, federal loan uh, uh, discharge applications. Um, so if you do, you know, you can schedule an appointment with OSAR. Um, you can email, email us as well if you need assistance with some of those things. Um, we will try our best. Um, and at the, and, you know, at the least, we'll get you to the agency that can help you. Um, so that's really it. That's all pretty much what I have on federal loans. I know you guys probably had more questions, but because I don't want to give you wrong information, I would rather refer you to an agency that actually does education on federal loans and in-depth education and series, um, you know, webinar series as well. And that would be DFPI. Um, but if you have any questions beyond that, um, you, I mean, uh, we can ask in Q&A or you can ask it now. Um, I don't know if you want them to wait before or after. Yeah, Janelle, one thing, could you switch mm -hmm. your screen that you're sharing to mm -hmm. the closed school um, yeah. discharge information that um, people might be interested in uh, that Ozar is actually providing, right? The application. Yeah. Okay. So uh, where is the form? Uh, where could people find that form? Or would it be best just to get in, in touch with Ozar about this so they can get help with that? Yeah, so the form to uh, for which document? This would be the student loan discharge. Uh, okay, yeah. Closed um, school. Yeah, so actually, so the closed school loan discharge application, it's in, maybe if I can just click on it, maybe I can just show you guys where to get it. Um, um, you can actually either get it from where I'm going to show you or you can request it from your loan servicer if you know who your loan servicer is. Um. Okay, hold on. Let me, yeah, I can just show you guys where you can get that loan application. Okay, so these are federal student aid forms. Sorry, I have a bunch of screens open. Let me move. Um, and this is something where Ozar would technically help the alum the alumni to fill it out right so it's yeah if you need yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you need our assistance we definitely can try our best to fill it out I just want to give the caveat because it's not ours and so it's not like yes you, you can for sure do this this is the correct way because we don't process them but yeah we've helped students fill out these applications before um okay so loan okay so this is all all information on all the loan forgiveness and discharge programs so there's the public service one here um borrows defense to repayment is on here um, there's this other one, there's these other ones that I, we don't really see too often, but the close school one is right here. And so it's this link. Um, let's see if it actually, on my end it's loading. Oh, okay. Here it is. So this is a loan discharge application school closure. And so, yeah, if you need assistance, um, you can email the link. Uh, um, the OSAR at dca.ca.gov. And then we also have a link to set up an appointment, but that's fine. You can just email us and just say, um, yeah, you'd like someone, you'd like assistance in, in filling this out, filling the application out. Um, I know I've walked students through it before. Um, just to let you know, um, any emails that you send to OSAR right now, um, we are like missing half of our team. So we're filling vacancies right now. So we will get back to you. So just be patient with us, but we are definitely here for students. We definitely want to help you as much as we can, even if it's not, you know, if the application doesn't belong to our agency, but yeah. Um, yeah. So you can set up an appointment, email us um, if you need assistance with that. 
could you put this uh, link also in the chat? I'm not sure, Frank, which actual form you were talking about. Frank Vivid was saying, I can't find the actual form and it required an EID that I don't have. So maybe uh, this is okay. the way to get to the form uh, that Chanel was um, pointing yeah, out. Yeah, so the reason why we didn't, I didn't give the direct link is because I've had students tell me like when I've tried to just like copy this, it doesn't send over correctly. So I'll put it in the chat. Let me let me know if, if somebody can click on it and if you see what I see, maybe, maybe it's fine. It um, looks fine to me. It's a PDF, but there was another form. Could you put the other overview uh, link one? also into the chat? Is it this one? Um, yeah. And then there was a question. Uh, what is the other form if you left the school more than 120 days before oh, yeah. it closed? So let's see. Okay, so uh, borrowers defense discharge. Um, and so for borrowers whose schools misled them or violated a law in relation to the borrower's loan edu education. And so um, um, that's how I, students who are over 120 days, um, they have applied for this, and especially if they feel like, like in this case, they're, the school's in violation of a certain law. But yeah, this is the other one, borrower's defense. Um, let me just click on this, see what happens. Um, when I've helped students, because let me just click on. Maybe that. you could just put the link on top into the chat as well, like where mm -hmm. there is the overview. Uh -huh. I think so, that would that would help. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thank so you. that's the one for bars defense specifically. Uh, oops. Um, yeah, and so I've only helped students uh, with the paper application because I don't have access usually to a student's. Well, I'm not, I, I never have access to a student's information, um, like login information, but let me, okay. So the first one I sent is the borrower's defense to repayment. And then this one is just the library forms that you can, um, you just have to make sure you click on the loan forgiveness and discharge drop down. Um, okay, perfect. And then I think he had a question about, he didn't know his login. Yeah. Uh, you it, click on borrower's defense. Yeah, he said that e the EID is required. Um, so that I don't have any information on. I would try to call um federal student aid. Um, I don't. And what is that ID number? Is that like your is that is that your ID number specifically for federal loans? Uh, Frank, do you want to unmute yourself? That was hello. The yeah, hey. go ahead. Yes. Um, it said something about an employee ID number. Um, mm -hmm. and that was anytime I like pretty much tried to log in to my uh federal student aid account. And I was looking at the student um no wait, which one was it? The uh, the community service loan forgiveness program mm -hmm. and the um the school closure one, but for, I couldn't find the school closure one, but I have the link now, so thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, but for the students or the, the service one, it just kept asking for my um, employee ID number to search for it. And I couldn't get past that. So I couldn't apply for it or anything. For the public service one? Yes. Yeah, so I've never actually walked any student through the public service one because you usually do with school closures. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have any information on that. However, um, if you, I would suggest two things: either watch maybe the webinar on DFPI, and if they have, they usually have like, I don't know if they have a contact on there for additional questions, or um, maybe someone in OSAR can research it, and then um, they actually might refer you to DFPI to be honest, because it's not school closure related. Um, so I would either do that. I would contact OSAR and say, you know, I need help filling out this application. I'm stuck here. Um, can you help me? Um, or just know that they might refer you to the DFPI like webinar. Um, so I would reach out to DFPI or um, OSAR to see. DFPI, DFPI, DFPI might be better um, or federal student aid too. So. But this is the employer ID number for SFAI, correct, Frank? I have no idea. I don't oh, know if okay. it's my current employer or if it's for SFAI when I was working there or 
I'm pretty sure Anything? it would be the employer ID number for, you know, the company that you worked or the organization you worked for that you are applying, you know, to use the years. So I would probably okay. go for the SFAI employer ID number or, you know, that that should make sense. And that probably we could we could easily find out um, through, you know, either um, Becky might know or um, Jose de los Reyes, I can ask for sure. <laughs> Um, I, I, I would, I would imagine it would be th that employer ID number, but I think it would also be just uh, in general, um, and Janelle, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. it, it would be good to just get help with filling out these things, right? Especially when it's yeah. closed, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, for sure. Um, and then like, if it's a form we've never helped out, like, I mean, at one point we've never helped any student fill out some of these, you know, so we had to kind of like see what we can do to help them. And so, um, yeah, I would just send an email to OSAR. And another thing too, when I've been on the webinars with DFPI or just watching, um, they do talk about um, having your, I guess, wherever you worked. Um, well, I guess SFAI is closed, but getting them not registered. So I don't know the process, but I remember them talking about you know, hey, my employer is not registered or, you know, the, I just remember what the webinar is talking about that specifically. So just, I would, I would watch that, you know, the, the either attend the one that's coming up on the 18th, or um, I know they've had previous one regard specifically related to um, the public service loan discharge. Thank you so much, Janelle. And I just put in the OZAR email again. So if you want to reach out for help from OZAR with any student loan applications, please use the OZAR at dca.ca.gov email since there are going to be new members in your team. And Janelle was actually promoted to be a manager <laughs> from a different, so Janelle will still be there, but a different uh, section, mm -hmm. right? And or else so, it'd be me helping you. Like, yeah. so. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I'm sure that we can find out what the employer identification number for SFBI was. I think we can do that in 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 you know five minutes. Um, I'm I'm happy to help you. This should be online by any like any kind of like tax I tax um reports or so they had to do. They there would be a federal tax number there. So um, Frank, if you want to email me uh, info at sfartistsalumni.org. I, I will I will be able to help you with that number. And then are there any other questions? Regarding loans. Um, something I did want to say because I know this is recorded. Um uh so like I mentioned before, the federal loan applications are not necessarily from, you know, from OSAR, from BPPE. So we might, I mean, please just don't be disappointed if we're actually trying to figure it out with you. Um, but we, I mean, because a lot of times that's what I've done. And so, because I really want to help students. And so just know we're not the experts, but we definitely, like our heart behind it is we do want to help. And so um, I don't want to over promise or like, you know, you over expect and then you're like, they don't know what they're doing, but we will try our best for sure. Can I ask a question, Janelle? Um, this is a Jenny. Um, um, so the loan discharge form, the loan forgiveness form, mm -hmm. would that depend upon the loan servicer? Yeah. Or so, um, uh, yeah. So if you're requesting it, you can request it from your loan servicer, um, and then you would actually send it to them as well. That's who you would submit it to is your loan servicer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah, you. no problem. Okay, and if there's no more questions, then I think we'll have, well, maybe we won't have time. But anyways, um, if you have more loan questions, we can probably save it for the end. The only last thing that I wanted to mention is just transfer information and just to clarify. And so um, one of the things that OSAR does um, when, you know, students who suffer, well, whether your school closes or not, if students need help on maybe looking for a school that they may be interested in, um, we have a lot of resources with private colleges, not saying, not, we're, not that we're pushing you to go to a private college, but because our database is mainly private colleges. So if you're interested in maybe transferring to another public call, to a public college or to a private college, that's another service that OSAR provides is um, basically assisting you through that process. Um, maybe figuring out which one is the best for you. If you do know a private college you're interested in, um, we can, um, um, let me just show you really quick on BPPE's website. Um, 
So um, some of the things that we assist is like seeing if a student or seeing if a school, a private college, if you are interested in going to private college, I'll just show you. Um, the BPPE has all disciplinary actions. So if a school, any private college was in violation of a law, um, our, our goal is to get them into compliance um, by issuing them, um, we issue citations. And so if you're interested in, you know, whatever, in any school, you can just, you know, look on this list and then it'll show their citation, uh, what they were in violation of, um, and then if they came into compliance. Um, so that's something that we, we could help you walk through. Another thing as well, um, oops, if you're going to a private college, um, private colleges are required to receive compliance inspections um, every certain amount of years. And so um, the results of that compliance inspection, so we're, we have staff go out to the schools um, to make sure that they're abiding by, you know, the laws that they're supposed to. And, um, sorry, let me go on here. Oh, that's not it. Um, whoa. And so the results of those compliance inspections, there we go, um, they're also sorted by school. And so sometimes we visit a school and there's no, no we call it a notice to comply. Um, there's no violations found on some schools. Um, there, you know, we do find violations. And so this isn't a disciplinary action. It's just us going out there and saying, hey, we found these things. You need to come into compliance in the, you know, for the benefit of the student. And so it'll show, you know, what we found, if they complied. And so these are things that I would recommend if you're looking, you know, if you're looking to transfer to another private college. Um, one other area that I do want to show you as well, a lot of people don't know um, that this is even a tool available. Um, when you do sign up, with, sign up with a private college, you do have to sign um, annual report results. Like basically, it, I would say it's kind of similar to the report card. So it shows, um, you know, how many students enrolled in the last couple of years of those students who enrolled, how many graduated how many passed the, an exam that was required by the state, um, you know, how many got employed after they graduated and how and about how much they're making. And so um, I would definitely look at this if you're interested in going to a private college, um, because I wouldn't want to go to a school who's like their graduation rate is, I mean, I'd want it to be 100 really, <laughs> but sometimes it's really low. And so I would want the assurance if I'm going to a school, what are my chances of graduating? You know, how much will I make? Um, so anyways, the results of um, annual, annual report and reports for the school are on our website as well. Um, sorry, I kind of wanted to show you guys an example. So some of these are old. This is not the current one, but I'll just click on it for example. Um, Okay, so it's also sorted by, you know, the name of the school. And so let's just click on this first one. Um, so it's not very, it doesn't look that good, but it has a bunch of information on here, how many programs they offer, how many students enrolled. Let me scroll down. Um, so it has program data, um, how much they're charging for the program in any specific year. So this one has a completion rate for this program of 100%, 19 um, began, 19 graduated, um, placement rate. So anyways, there's just a lot of information on here. And if you don't remember any of this, just know that one of the OSAR staff can assist in like going through some of these tools um, to help you pick the school that's best for you. Um, and so that's kind of the part that we play in the transfer. We just wanna make sure you you're informed, you have the information that you need so that you can you know, make the best choice. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it on my part. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Tanal. Um, that was wonderful. I think a lot of people already got information that they needed and they were heading out and saying thank you already. Oh, and okay. I think uh, a lot of you, I know, uh, sfi.edu, the website is unfortunately down now. So there was still a lot of information on there. Uh, please go and head over to sfartistsalumni.org. There are, um, there is information there. And I'm just gonna, uh, Janelle, if you're okay with it, let them know that uh, there is an update on the status of the school. 800 Chestnut is um, 
potentially being bought by a nonprofit group uh, that is spearheaded by Laureen Powell Jobs, who you might know as Steve Jobs' um, wife when he was alive. And uh, they want to turn it into a school again. Uh, it will not be an accredited school. It will be for now an unaccredited school. But um, Laureen is very interested in, in buying the building and renovating it and turning it into a school again. Uh, and uh, we are also in touch with that group now, uh, thank God. And we we would love to do an um, update for you as soon as we can um, on what their plans are for the renovations that are going to take a very long time, as you might know. And uh, but it will it will be if this group actually purchases it, and that would be in December. It would be open to the public again. You would be able to go see the Diego Rivera mural that Janelle was also able to see. Oh, cool. And, um, you know, there is there still a way to get an honorary doctorate? I'm I'm not sure. Probably not right now. Um, but uh, it looks like they they are doing very they, they have great ideas for for the for the campus, also including uh, dance uh, music professionals from the city uh, of San Francisco, and it sounds like a, a wonderful opportunity. There will be a public meeting, um, on, I believe on Wednesday. It is this week about the. Um, um, you know that it that the land uh, will is is allowed to be acquired by a school that is unaccredited um so that has to change the um, uh, you know the designation of the city designation so um i i recommend anyone who is in san francisco and can make it to that meeting to go and 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 also voice your concerns or your your approvals for for that development uh, I believe the meeting will be in person. It's on the Facebook group. Uh, someone posted the information. I believe it's in person, uh, but it will be a, a city meeting. And um, yeah, um, I I really, if there are no other questions, I just I have just, one more. I just have one more thing to go add ahead. to mention this. Um, so I know I provided a lot of resources or just some resources today. Um, and I was mentioning this to Maria. So because I work for the state of California, like the inform our jurisdiction of the law that we can actually oversee is very limited. And so what I'm gonna put in the link is a link to free legal services. It's a search tool to search free legal services in your area because a lot of students want help outside of what you know the state can provide. And you know, we worked with some of these um free legal services because their clients who are students like have applied for federal loan, um, federal loan um, programs. And so I know they've, th these free legal, legal services, they've helped students fill out all these applications for federal loan discharge. And they, because they've done it before, they, they know how to do it. And so that's another resource too, if you qualify um, to have someone else like really walk you through the process. And obviously if, you know, they're, they're attorneys, so they know more probably about what's going on with like federal law changes and all that. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that's available to you as well. Um, um, a lot of some students have used it and, you know, I feel like they're able to help a lot. I don't want to say a lot more, but more in detail than what we can sometimes because of, we're a little bit limited. So, yeah. I'm going to put the links in again. I hope I copied everything. I'm going to make sure that this video is going to be on YouTube with all the information of all the links. I'm going to sort them through. Uh, maybe Janelle, you can also send me a whole list uh, via email so we can put okay. them in. Oh, thank you, Annie. Uh, Annie put in the notice of public hearing. So yeah, um, Janelle, I know we asked a lot of you today. Uh, okay. You know, we, this was mainly focused today on the SAPI transcripts. We want to we want to get the word out that everyone knows how to get their transcripts because we know how important it is. But we also wanted to take advantage of your role in like helping and supporting uh, students and alumni in the student loan forgiveness applications. So you also know that you have a an ally there at Ozar. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you uh, run into any issues, please let us know because uh, we might be able to invite someone from 
the DFPI, um, the, who actually does the federal, does the loan uh, applications, right? Education. And we might be able to invite someone from them to talk to us about any specific issues. So please just let us know um, what you need. You know, at SFA, at SFA, we are trying to support you as much as you as we can, especially now that the school is gone and the website is down from the school. So please just feel free to reach out to us. Um, our email is info at sfartistsalumni.org. Um, you probably know a couple of us. Eugenie is here today helping with the Zoom again. Annie is here today. Annie Reiniger and um you you know we have we have a big team of people who are always um excited to hear from you and also to help you out on social media um or on via email or on our website so please don't hesitate to to let us know what you need because that's really what we what we're here for and yeah thank you so much Janelle and thank, thank you, you so much Yesenia. thank you so much Yesenia. And I'm going to stop the recording now. Um...